this is our entire Doctor Who DVD collection. So, let's take a closer look. First up, it's the classics. In 2020, we watched the classics for the first time, and these are the DVDs we just needed to get our hands on. This is the box set we would recommend to anyone starting the classics. Comes with three stories, an unearthly child, the Daleks, and Edge of Destruction. And all together, they make 13 episodes, so it's pretty much a new Who series. I didn't even think about that. Next one, we skipped Marco Polo, we got the Keys of Marinus. This was so good. Honestly, like the Vord are great villains, I think. I love the setting with the moving walls. Yeah, I love Keys of Marinus. For the Aztecs, this is a story we actually picked up quite late on, and I've no idea why. It's a brilliant historical, loads of great fight scenes, and it's just great. I adore this episode ever since like the first part and i'm not going to spoil what happens in the cliffhanger but it's like classic doctor who like it's just peak i think it's a really cool story susan's a lot more likable up until this point she's not very likable because <laughs> she just screams all the time she screams a but lot I, I, I really like it she feels like she's got more grown up in this one and i really like that i like that vibe for the reign of terror we have a confession to make. No! <laughs> On a rewatch, we made sure to skip missing episodes as we were waiting for them to be animated. That aged well. We didn't know this one was animated, so we skipped it and we still haven't seen it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. But we will and yeah. There's, we Looking forward to it. I mean, it is the finale of season one, so what's it gonna be like? Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. The first one we got from season two was the Dalek Invasion of Earth. Skipped Planet of Giants because Lewis hates it. He <laughs> really doesn't like it. I despise it. Yeah, but the Dalek Invasion of Earth is like an epic Dalek story. There's so many iconic scenes you won't have realised if you haven't seen this episode or from this episode. Next is The Rescue and the Romans, which is quite an odd box set to get. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, we only have this because it's The Rescue. That is literally the only reason. The Rescue's awesome. The Romans, I forgot all about it. I generally remember nothing. <laughs> I know, it's one of those that I don't remember watching, which is probably not a good thing. But The Rescue's amazing. Two parts of just glorious TV. I love this box set. The Space Museum and The Chase. One in the Space Museum is one of those that you don't think is going to be good. Watched it and we're like, oh, it's so good. What? And the concepts are so clever. So clever. And the chase. I won't spoil what happens in it, but it's a very special one and close to my heart. And it's got Daleks. The Time Meddler. I oh. actually can't believe this was made in the 1960s because it generally feels like a new Who story. Yeah, it's so good. The cliffhanger, which again, we won't spoil, but if you know, you, know. you bloody know. Also, it's unintentionally funny. Uh, no, it actually is. <laughs> it actually really is funny. It's just really enjoyable. On to one I didn't think we were going to enjoy that much, but we did. Galaxy 4, the first of our animated collection. Um, really enjoyed this one. I think it's a really cool story. You can imagine it in New Who actually. Mm -hmm. You can. Um, but yeah, I really like it. Next up is the arc and I, I don't know what to say. Honestly, after like one or two episodes, this isn't really a spoiler. You think something's going to happen and you're like, what? 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 And then it shifts. And that shift makes this story. The oh, I love it. I love it so much. The monoids are great. It's, it really is a brilliant story. The War Machines! This is really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. It's a bit of a drab setting if you really think about it, but it just feels so epic in scale for some reason. It's just one of those that you're like, it's just really good. It's really good. It really is. Finally, to finish off the First Doctor era, is the Tenth Planet. The Modas Cybermen are great, the speech is great, and I mean, yeah, it's a classic and there's a reason everyone loves it. On to the second Doctor, and what an awesome Doctor the second Doctor is. I know I'm a little bit biased, because he's my favourite, but 
It's such a good opening for him. Patrick Troughton, what a legend, what a legend. Next up we have the Moonbase. The Cybermen are brilliant in this and their theme is just incredible. It's such a cool story, it really is. And a brilliant setting. So good. I need to watch it again. <laughs> it's so good. I need to watch it again. <gasps> Oh, one thing that's sad about the Second Doctor era is there's so many missing episodes, but his animations are awesome. Oh my goodness. I adore this. I remember seeing like all the like colours and things and seeing the macro come in. I'm like, oh, and then you go back and watch the scenes and you're like, oh, you see what you did there. Oh, it's so good. I really love this one. Yeah, the macro tower is awesome. Speaking of animations, next up we have the Faceless Ones. Very good. Um, it's just a very feel-good story. It's just very well made. The animation I think is great. Mm -hmm. Very true to the original. And it's great that some episodes were surviving. We can still watch them. So there's that too. The Evil of the Daleks. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting too much from this one. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And the characters are really strong. Like, if they're meant to be unlikable, oh boy, you don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're supposed to be likable, oh boy, you like them. Like the maid. She's so sweet. <laughs> the Tomb of the Cybermen. Ah. I'll be honest with you, I think this is a very boring story. And... Overrated! It is. It really is overrated. In fairness, we have only seen it once. Nah, it doesn't matter. And maybe on second rewatch we'll like it. Be honest, you only like the story because of that Cyberman scene. It's the, the, only, it's the only reason. You're lying to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it just gets worse. <laughs> we haven't watched this one yet. <laughs> Probably out of pure fear. Yeah. Um, the 3D anime, it's, I mean, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> but... We haven't really gave it a chance yet, so it's not fair to judge. Mm -hmm. But really excited to watch it when we do get back to watching all the classics again. Then we have Fury from the Deep. I love this one. I do too. Some people say it's one of the weaker animations. Completely disagree. Really emotional ending. Yeah. And just... really well directed. Yeah. I know they took a lot of creative liberty in this animation compared to the originals. But I really liked it. I think it's great. This is a really good one. The Mind Robber. Absolutely love this one. So good. Oh my goodness, the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger for the first episode. <laughs> is... Wow. Oh my goodness. There's just so much in this. I think if you watch it, you would always find something different. Mm -hmm. Like, have you forgotten there's a Minotaur in this? Yes. There you go. Now, one that we went in with a lot of hype, and we can confirm this isn't overrated. The invasion is amazing. That scene is incredible. Maybe a bit long. It does go mm. on quite a bit. It's quite a long story. But it's worth it. Yeah. The Seeds of Death. Every time we like go through all the classics and try to like memorise them. I know it's kind of sad. Uh, <laughs> but when we try and memorise them, Seeds of Doom and Seeds of Death, we always mix up. First of all, problems. Yeah, I know. Really enjoy this. Uh, T-Mat is a really cool business. Um, it's nice to see the Ice Warriors again, even though we don't have the original. We need to though. We do, yeah, we do we, need to get We are one. planning on getting it. But yeah, this one just feels really good. And Patrick Troughton is, as always, doing an amazing performance. And the War Games. Wow. What is it, ten parts? Ten parts. We watched it all in one day and it was so worth it. It's genuinely brilliant. Like, it, it doesn't even go slow. I don't know if I'll enjoy it on rewatch, but first time watching this, amazing. Absolute work of art. Literally after every part, we're like, I can't believe he's coming. Okay, we are on to the third Doctor. And now, from now on, Doctor Who's in colour, which was an amazing transition, to be honest. Uh, I will say, third Doctor era feels a lot more soap opera. It does. I get that. I get that. Like, yeah. A lot more soap opera. But yeah, I absolutely love Spearhead from Space and Terror of the Autons is in this, but Terror of the Autons is the series after. But yeah, love them both. I think the Autons are a great monster and it was good that they brought in a new monster for the Third Doctor, unlike Second Doctor where he had the Daleks. And the Master. 
And the master, yes. What am I saying? <laughs> Tower of the Ultrons and the master. Yeah. Amazing. Good set. And it just gets better. What a box set this is. And um, Doctrine Silurus is amazing. The Sea Devils. I'm so happy to come back. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Warriors of the Deep. Mm. <laughs> but we do, we're actually going to rewatch it quite soon. The Claws of Axos. Really enjoy it. I think it's a cool story. Uh, it's a really cool setting. Cool monsters. And the Masters in it again. Watch out. Then we have the Daemons. Or the Demons. Demons. Let's just say Daemons. Daemons. Oh, no, I actually can't say anything. It's just... I can't. <laughs> that first part is incredible. And that cliffhanger is incredible. And to be honest, the whole story is... Incredible. <laughs> Peldon Tales. So we have the Curse of Peldon, which actually follows... Is it Day of the Daleks? There's so many of the <laughs> Daleks ones in this one. Oh yeah, it's Day. Uh, the Monster of Peladon is mm. later on, and that doesn't have Joe Grant like the other ones have. Uh -huh. This one has Sarah Jane. So I feel like if a classic Who fan brought this up, they would think they're together. But then you watch them and they're like... There's clearly a lot of things happened in the middle. Mm -hmm. Both are good, but the Curse of Peladon is far superior. Yeah. In fact, the Curse of Peladon, before I actually got to my favourite classic serial, um, was my favourite. Then we have the Three Doctors. It's really good. Really good. Perfect anniversary. The Doctor drawback, including William Hartnell. I know, William Hartnell's actually in it. We love that. Oh my god, it's great. The Brigadier Benton, it really is such a brilliant anniversary for Doctor Who and it just fits the show so perfectly. Roll up, roll up, a carnival of monsters! Quite proud of that. Not bad. This is amazing. Yeah. You wouldn't think it's amazing. It actually sounds like one of those fillers. Uh -huh. But I really enjoy this one. Mm -hmm. I think the third Doctor's great. I think Joe Grant's great. I like the side characters. Don't love the side characters to be honest. They're a bit... Yeah. Dalek War. I'll be real, we're incredibly biased because we did next time trailers and it just shows what a next time can do because that has changed our whole view on this whole season. <laughs> but yeah, I actually honestly don't remember it to be honest. But I think we liked it. There must have been a reason we got it. Loved Planet of the Daleks. Yeah, it may be a Daleks ripoff, but what can you do? It was just good. It was good. This is an excellent story. The Green Death is the peak third Doctor era, to yeah. be honest. It just encapsulates everything that the era's been up to this point. And Joe Grant is so good in it. Really good. This is a mammoth of a box set. Four stories. The Time Warrior from... We've seen it before. It wasn't the... F we didn't... We've seen it mm -hmm. at our uncle's. My favourite bit from that is when he... Is it third doctor that just swings down off like the chandelier? Mm -hmm. That bit's good. Really good. That's like a highlight. The Sontan Experiment, I think it's pretty good. It was a really good in between of season 12. Mm -hmm. The Invasion of Time, not really a Sontaran story. Yeah, it's You're not. kidding yourself. <laughs> and the two doctors. Mm -hmm. Hate it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It triggers me so much. And we are on to the third Doctor's finale. Yes. Planet of the Spiders. Not your typical Doctor finale, but I really like that. Mm -hmm. I like how it doesn't feel big and bombastic. You're just like, oh, so the Doctor could die in an episode like this. I think the eight legs, I think they're called, yeah. are really good characters. Really good villains. I love Sarah Jane in it. Um, Yates is in it. And a bit of redemption goes on. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not going to tell you why. Sure. Also, first regeneration in colour. So, next up we have Robot. The fourth Doctor's first story and instant classic. Yep, at this point my favourite. Yeah. The at this point. It's just great. It really is brilliant. It's like a different vibe. Like, the third Doctor has that soap opera vibe. But this feels a bit more like it's going down that... 
I don't even know what to say. It's just it's good. It's just really good. It's good. Just trust us. It's good. It's good. It's good. The arc in space, I didn't think would be good. I was wrong. Some people will say it's bad, especially with the polystyrene effect. <laughs> but I absolutely adore this. I love the setting. I really like how the characters interact. I love the story. It's really good. Trust us, it's really good. Season 12 is just phenomenal. I mean, it has Genesis of the Daleks. Nice. Amazing. Amazing story. I mean, Davros is brilliant in it. It's such a good story. The gas mask people, Sarah Jane's brilliant in it. Harry's great in it. One thing though, this may be the genesis of the Daleks. Where's the genesis of Davros? And no! The Magician's Apprentice does not count. Bit triggered actually, because when I saw the genesis of the Daleks, I'm like, oh, this is how Davros turns evil! This is how the Daleks get made! I didn't get that. So it's a little bit triggering, but it's a very good story. Very good setting as well. It's just very good. <laughs> Okay, on to season 13, Terror of the Zygons, and this one is in Scotland! I know, good old Scotland. And Jamie's not in it, which is quite sad, to be oh, honest. Could you imagine if Jamie was in this story? Exactly, Jamie in Terror of the Zygons would be amazing. This is really good, a really good opening once again. Sarah Jane once again has got even better in this season. Uh -huh. And Harry's in this one too, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. Really good. Harry's alright. <laughs> The Zygons are. Sarah Jane's better, let's face it. The Zygons are a brilliant monster concept and it just shows how much it works in the story. Yes! Pyramids of Mars is flipping fantastic. It is incredible. If you think it's bad, you're an idiot. It is phenomenal. It's just. Sutek needs to come to New Who. It's just amazing. This was my favourite story. I mean, the title also delivers. They go to Mars. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. This episode is probably one of the most horrific concepts in Doctor Who. Yeah. But it's done so right. So right. Like, this is exactly how you do it. And also, you'd be surprised how canonic this is. Is canonic a word? Let's make it a word. It just, like, there's a lot of things that you wouldn't think would be mm -hmm. in this story that are but there is a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth because if it wasn't for this story we probably wouldn't have had the timeless child <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> if that broke you're paying for another one the seeds of doom incredible i mean it really is great the idea of the greenery and stuff but it's the scenes in which like what is it like they want to compost the doctor oh yeah like it's such a good, like, such a mean villain. It's a bit James Bondy. Yeah, and it starts, like, not in the actual setting. It's like, in That's the thing, the settings oh. are, like, all over the place, and I love that. Amazing. My favourite classic serial, The Robots of Death, was, like, I was so like, that's just going to be a typical Doctor Who episode. It kind of was, but I don't freaking care. That was... Honestly, an experience when I first saw this for the first time, and I kept turning to Lewis after every cliffhanger, and I was like, I think this is going to be my favourite. And I was like, oh, please, please, please don't lose it because that's happened. Mm -hmm. It was just good from start to finish. I, I love it. I love the monsters. Oh my goodness, the monsters are brilliant. <laughs> oh dear. The talons of like <laughs> the most racist the Doctor Who episode. I mean, it still is quite good. <laughs> that's, the, that's the annoying thing. Take the racism out and you've uh -huh. got such a solid story. Yeah. It has been tainted quite a lot, but it still is actually a good story. It, it is, is really enjoyable. If you can manage to look past it. Yes. City of Death. We go to France. I just really love that scene. Oh yeah, something I've just realised. <laughs> we skipped all of season 16. It's not Romana 1's fault. No. She's brilliant. And Romana 2's brilliant also. Mm -hmm. But that season is just not up to it. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's so very clear. Season 15. Oh, we skipped season 15 as well, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, season 15 and season 16 just feel like they're lackluster in comparison. I know there's going to be people that will have my head for saying that. But it's just what I think. 
Maybe on rewatch I'll like it. Yeah. But City of Death was, in my opinion, in our opinion, in our opinion, a return to form. City of Death is really strong. Um, good monster, good setting, good characters. Yeah, really good one. Love City of Death. The Nightmare of Eden. Brilliant concept, brilliant monster, brilliant story. I really wanted to like this one because of Taylor Vision's audio series in mm -hmm. Another One yeah. Bites the Dust, which probably is our favourite. Oh yeah, 100%. Negloss. Very good. I think the idea of a shape-shifting monster works really well in Doctor Who all the time. And the fourth Doctor delivers. The Meg Honestly, the Megalos is a brilliant villain of Doctor Who. Yeah. I, I mean, it... Yeah. Also... Also... That's Jack on the Hill. Barbara's in this. Not actually Barbara, but the actress. And that was... Oh, that was amazing. Now, I really like this box set because it's a perfect transition from the fourth Doctor to the fifth Doctor. Mm -hmm. We have to keep her tracking. Legopolis and then Castro Valva. I know people like Castro Valva, but... Ugh, do you right. know? Do you actually like Castro Valva? What is it, really? You like, don't. The Doctor <laughs> just passed out for the entire episode. Now, that was okay in a Christmas, the Christmas Invasion mm -hmm. because it's one episode. Exactly. I swear the fifth Doctor is passed out for like... What is it, four parts? Yeah. It's a bit of a joke, to be honest. It, it, it low-key is. We do, we do need to rewatch it, though, because there must be some reason that everyone likes it so much. Uh, Legopolis, though. Really good. Yes. Really good send-off for the fourth Doctor. Next up, we have Earthshock. We've seen the story before, so we knew we'd love it. And something I also love is the Cyberman design. I don't care. It is brilliant. Also, Adric goes, so that's a plus. <laughs> this is the only good one from season 19. I disagree. The visitation. Get right. No, not to get right. <laughs> <laughs> the Five Doctors. Once again, another one we've seen. We've seen quite a lot of the Fifth Doctor we beforehand. Did. I mean, it has all the Doctors. Set the first Doctor, because we've got a... And the fourth Doctor isn't really in it, which is annoying. Yeah, that's true. We see you. We see you. We see what you did. Why did Tom Baker not come back? Oh, well, I don't know. Tell me. Susan's there. Jamie's there. Lot of companions. Cybermen. Daleks. Master. Probably the definitive Doctor anniversary. Resurrection of the Daleks. Davros is back. I mean, he was back in Destiny, but he's, he's back, back here. He's back, back, yeah. He's back, back. Um, really good story. I think it was great. Tegan's farewell. It's actually a bit of a meh ended for Tegan. She just walks off. It's quite sad. Yeah. And we're on to the Fifth Doctor's last one. Mm -hmm. The Caves of Androzani. I really genuinely, 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 based on all the Fifth Doctor era, now yeah. I do think that needs a rewatch the most because oh, we didn't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one I didn't think would be good. It could possibly be the best Fifth Doctor one in his era. Oh, it is. Which is very fitting because it's his final climax. I'll be real. The Fifth Doctor, I don't think was the greatest in his thing. And we weren't that sad to see him go, but when this story came, all of a sudden, I really didn't want him to leave. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, give him another series. Next, we have Attack of the Cybermen. Again, I think the story's great. Yeah, he's an underrated Doctor. He is. We've, after the Fifth Doctor era, we were like, okay, expectations are low for the Sixth Doctor. He's really good. Some questionable moments. Mm, yeah. But this story's great. I love the setting of the sewers. I think the Cybermen are great in it. And we see a conversion, which Classic Who lacks a lot of. Yeah. Vengeance on Varos is another one I expected to be bad, but thought was amazing. Actually, mm -hmm. at one point, Contender to be my favourite. There you go. Uh, it's a really cool story. It is. It's very good. I uh, love the sort of dystopian vibe it has. I need to rewatch this one because I remember loving it the trial of a time lord is brilliant 
And we didn't think we'd like this one, to be honest, because we didn't enjoy Key to Time, which was a series. Yeah. But Travel Time was great. It actually really is. It has the in entrance to Mel, the exit to Parry, brilliant villains in it, and, I mean, he's literally on trial, but it's still entertaining. The first two are a bit meh. The last two are good. Yeah, but the last two just make it good. Like, that's okay. just made the series amazing, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. If you don't like this story... <laughs> you're wrong! Paradise Towers is an underrated classic. And the music is the... That's something I really like. In the Seventh Doctor era, oh, the yeah. music is massively stepping up, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, really, really enjoy it. I love the robot. It's quite creepy. But it shouldn't be. That's why I think it's so like good that it's called like Paradise Towers because you think it's going to be this nice, fun romp, but it's actually a really dark story. It is. Really dark. Next we have Ace Adventures. Comes with Dragonfire and the Happiness Patrol. Happiness Patrol is definitely the highlight of this box app. Yeah. Loved Happiness Patrol. That's the reason we got it. Candyman is amazing. I'd love Candyman to be back. It's never going to happen, but... No, it's not happening. It'd be so cool. This is amazing. Also, I didn't realise it's set in Coal Hill. I know. That's so cool. This is my favourite classic story. This is elite. Phenomenal. You got robots of death. I have to get this. Davros in it. There's the speech at the end. There's the action special weapons. Dalek. <laughs> amazing. It is very good. The Curse of Fenric. Doctor Who, when it goes dark, works really well in the classic era. And this really worked. The Haemovores are brilliant. The setting of like the church and like the guy with the green eyes at the end. Really good. Really, really good. Quite scary, but brilliant. Yeah, it's really good. But unfortunately, the seventh Doctor era is quite short. I know. And we got survival to finish it off. Which was such a shame. It's a beautiful ending. It's such a special one. I would have liked Classic Square of a better story, if I'm honest. Because mm -hmm. I don't think it's phenomenal. Yeah, it feels like it was just cut short. But it is really still good. Next up, we have the Doctor Who the movie. Now, we didn't actually rewatch this one because I think we were waiting for the right moment. Yeah. And also, it's an odd to connect to classics and you who it's like a weird in between yeah. however i feel like an idiot because it's so it is we've seen it before and it is so good and we really really need to watch this yeah you'll notice that there's a lot of stuff taken from this to build the revived era i know new who okay so of course we've got the first series now actually i think we had to buy this again because we didn't really look after our DVDs when we were little. We were young. Very, very young. So I went and rebought quite a lot of the first few new series. Mm -hmm. But yeah, love the first series. The Ninth Doctor is brilliant. You wouldn't think so with this sort of gangster vibe. I, can, I, can't, I can't remember what the backlash was like, but I think there would have been a lot of classic fans like, No! That's not what the Doctor is! But I think it really works. I think it really works, especially with the Time War thing that's introduced. It's really strong. It's honestly a perfect series. It shows you everything you need to know about Doctor Who in one series, and this is the perfect start to a series. On to series two. Again, very good series. Some people say it's not, and they're wrong. The stories in this are phenomenal. The Utu Potter, Girl in the Fireplace. Oh, there's so the Cyberman two-parter and Doomsday. What a finale. Not as amazing as this. Lewis's favourite, the third series, Martha's excellent. You wouldn't think it would be easy to replace Rose because she had some stands. But Martha's amazing. A really, really, really underrated companion. It's a brilliant series, really good settings, really good monsters, memorable stories. And Daleks in Manhattan, although it's got its haters, I think is one of the strongest Dalek stories ever. It's the honest. best Dalek story well, ever. Well, you would say that. That's your favourite. <laughs> Moving on to the Infinite Quest. 
I love this. Animated Doctor Who story. I remember watching this every single week from Totally Doctor Who. Oh, Totally Doctor Who. <laughs> oh. Love the design style. Actually a decent story. And yeah, it's actually really good. And I guarantee you, you've most likely forgotten about it. So go we'll re it again. it again. Watch it again. <laughs> Series 4. Oh my goodness, I was over the moon when it got announced that Donna was coming back. I know. Because I loved her in The Runaway Bride. I know she was a bit theatrical, but I didn't care. Because I absolutely adored Donna. And then the series trailer came out and you're like, this is going to be incredible. And it was. It really was. There's a reason why everyone says this is the best one. For us, it's not the no. best. But I'd say collectively, we can agree that Series 4 probably is the best one of New Who. I mean, it's literally got the Avengers End game of Doctor Who in it. It does. That is a amazing, amazing finale. Next, we've got Dreamland. Not as good as the Infinite Quest. The animation isn't as great. Mm -hmm. Like what they were doing. The villains are alright. Yeah. But if it's between this or Infinite Quest, I know what I'm picking. Yeah. It's the specials. Now, the specials are a bit camp in places like the end of time and planet of the dead and the next doctor to be fair mm, so are I... quite camp but it, it, it's worth it it feels like he's earned to have that fun like in the next doctor where he's literally getting dragged across the floor by the cyber shade you you're just happy to see this doctor having like a good time but the waters of mars is a highlight yeah that's the best one by I far i think that could be up there with the best david tennant stories of all time oh yeah not strictly Doctor Who, but we've got to include this. All five series of the Sarah Jane Adventures. I mean, words can't do justice how brilliant the show actually is. If you haven't seen the Sarah Jane Adventures, what are you doing? You are not no, What are actually are you doing? Like, it was cut short. I know, it was going to be such a good finale. Honestly, I would have watched that until I was 90. I couldn't care less that it was a kid's show. Sarah Jane Adventures was just peak. Amazing. Series 5! I genuinely think this is such a well-rounded polished series that comes full circle and it does tie up everything Yeah, no, that's really fair. well, really well. I think that's the reason I like it so much. Mm -hmm. It's not even the episodes because there are some episodes that you're like... <sighs> but it's just so like it feels like it, everything was planned and everything needed to happen in this series for it to work so well. Series 6. It's good, but what a fall from grace this is from Series <laughs> it's 5. Cl it's the cliffhanger for the first one. It's a brilliant story, the first story, but yeah. the cliffhanger is <laughs> interesting. Also, it's split into two parts, which I don't know if it works that well, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Rory's a companion officially, which is a plus. We love yes, Rory. Yes, we love Rory. And it's a tricky one, but... I can understand why people would love it, but I can also understand why people would hate it. Probably the most timey-wimey we've had. Yeah. Everyone don't seem to like this series. I can't understand why. I think it's great, personally. I think, for a start, Matt Smith's at his strongest, probably. Although, the Clara, like, arc, it's played a bit weirdly. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's not Matt Smith's fault. It is to do with the scripting. But yeah, I really, I really like it. And the snowman was a definite highlight. I know some people don't think it's the best Christmas special, but I really think it's, I, I think it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, snowman. Yes, 100%. Yeah, I really like the snowman. And oh, Madame Vastra, Jenny and Strax are such a good trio. I know. And we got them twice in this. Too little. <laughs> I know! When they get in their spin-off, eh? Eh? To go with the 50th anniversary, we got an adventure in space and time, and I adore this. So cute. I love seeing the classics we created, and I'm totally up for it happening again. Yeah. I think you should do one for each Doctor. Also, the ending is so it's but honestly, I think I did cry. Oh, I did. Many, I've probably cried every time I've watched it. It's beautiful, and it just, it, it, 
it just encapsulates what Doctor Who is. Do you know what's the shock about this one? Mark Gatiss wrote it, and I love Mark Gatiss's stuff, but mm-hmm. I didn't think he was capable of writing that. It's really good. So strong. So strong. Of course, 2013 was part of Series 7, but 2013 happens to be the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. So that was an experience. So glad we've been Doctor Who fans when that happened. I know. Because that was... Oh, wow. Just seeing every shop celebrating Doctor Who again. And even, like, teachers in schools and that. I was like, oh, Doctor Who's 50 years old. And like, I know! (laughs) It was so good. I just... Doctor Who just felt like god-tier television. And it is. Yes. But it felt like everyone else knew it. Mm Mm-hmm. Moving on to Time of the Doctor. I love this one. I do love it. Oh dear. But... Mm. (sighs) I think coming after the 50th anniversary was always going to be tricky. That that was, yeah. It's a really weird send-off. You're like, goes old and... Yeah. It is a good story though. It's very Christmassy. And... I wouldn't change it for the world, but... It just, it's odd. Series 8, at first, we weren't that big a fan of. We were like, oh, who yeah. is Peter Capaldi? And like, I get he's a good actor, but why is he dark all of a sudden? We've lost the kiddie element. Mm-hmm. That sort of, like, youthful energy that Doctor Who had. It's too dark. That's the issue. It was originally too dark, and I think that's what made half the audience switch off, which is a shame. Um, another series that people seem to hate, Series 9! Capaldi improved massively right. in this. He did, definitely. Clara was great in this, Face the oh, Raven. Just speaking about Capaldi just makes me go, oh, Capaldi. He smashed it. Actually, Immense. smashed it. Immense. I don't think this is that bad a series. I think there's some duds, like the girl who died, w- women who lived also, and Hal Ben coming after Heaven Sent. Well, yeah, that kind of put the bitter taste in everyone's mouth. I will say though, Clara's excellent in the series. Yes. I really like how she went down that reckless route. I think that was very in character, especially based on how Series 8 went down. And bear in mind, last time this happened, because obviously she had Matt Smith beforehand, Mm -hmm. and then Peter Capaldi came. When Rose had that, Rose literally couldn't let go of the Doctor, and that happened to Clara. So, oh, it's good. It's good. Hellbent isn't as bad as everyone says it is, but at first watch, it is. <laughs> it is. We may have had to wait an extra year for this series, but it was actually worth it. It was. I loved when the promotionals came out and it just felt like this was just a standard Doctor Who series. I mean, it wasn't. A lot happened in it that was quite influential. Bill Potts. Five stars, five stars. We don't, we don't care about that one. That Telegraph, show- <laughs> what are you thinking? It shows how good it is. It really is a brilliant story. The finale is incredible. Bill is a brilliant companion. Oh, Bill. Yeah, Capaldi. I'm not a fan of Nora, though. I liked him better in the Husband's Prefer song. I agree. Next up, we have Twice Upon a Time. Don't take this one too seriously. This is just a fun Christmas special. Yeah. A bit annoying it's Capaldi's last, but also it fits really well. Does it, though? Would have the Doctor Falls been a more fitting... Yeah, but... But, one thing I will say is, you kind of needed this sit back, relax, have a laugh type thing for a final story, I feel. Yeah. I was in love with this era until that, that, like, whoops trailer came out. And then the actual trailer came out. You got, Legends! It's Exodus! You're like, yes! And then it goes... Glorious, glorious. I was like, oh no, this is not what we want. Yeah, we knew it was going to be it's bad. It's like, who's in charge? She's in charge, bro. I'm like, no, no, no. Says who? No, stop it. Says so us. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not great. I'm it's sorry. not. It's, it's ne- not. It's never, it's never going to be a series that I like. It's never going to be a series I'm that sorry, I like. I'm sorry, but. However, I can respect it now because of the series that followed. However, on positive news. Oh, I love this one. Resolution is really good. When I rewatched it, I have to admit, it did kind of go down, like watching it all back to back, yeah. but it is really good and it's a good Dalek trilogy. Also, they address the unit thing. 
So it was planned. At least I hope it was planned. Now, Series 12, after Series 11 had severely brought down expectations, mm -hmm. did raise them up a bit. Because it's my fault, I think it's really strong. Part 1 is. Uh, part 2 lets it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. I wouldn't say a lot. I think it does. But I, I, I really like Spyfall. Orphan 55, I actually enjoyed it first watch too. Yeah. And Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. So this was looking really, really strong. 6 and 7, Praxis and Can You Hear Me, really don't like them. Yeah. Really don't like them. However, I do like the ending of Can You Hear Me. I think that's good. Um, 8, 9 and 10, obviously the Cyberman. They're good. They are good. But... Let's just say, this series always felt to me like the step in the right direction for the next one to be really good. Were we right? This, however, is excellent. Revolution of the Daleks is really good. It's so good. Probably the best Jodie Whittaker story. I, I would say so. Oh, Genuinely. No, 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 it's War. It's War of Sontaras. <gasps> oh, War of Sontaras. Really, actually, really good. And... Oh, it's just so good. I love the Daleks in this. I think it's a really cool concept. I mean, I'm surprised they haven't done it already, you know. Last but not least. Sucks. Now, the Halloween Apocalypse, um, we even did a watch along of it. I know. So you know we really enjoyed the Halloween Apocalypse. Yes. And we loved War of the Sontarans. The third one, we were a bit miffed about because we we're like, well, there's no really, there's not really room. Yeah. For fillers. Mm -hmm. So Once Upon a Time was a bit of a letdown. But then we're back straight away to Village of Angels and we're like, what? And then you get Survivors of the Flats and you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you get the Vanquishers, which ties up everything. Yeah. I, d I don't know about the Vanquishers because I enjoyed watching it, mm -hmm. but I would have loved that story had it not been the finale. Loved what this series was trying to do. I think the stories and some of the stories are great in this. The characters are brilliant. I think the new villains introduced were really well done. Yeah. Um, I think this probably this definitely the best Whitaker series. Yeah. So, it worked. I think it worked. And Dan is amazing. So, <gasps> Dan, yeah. Yes. Oh, I love Dan. So there you go. We have gone through all our Doctor Who DVDs. It took a lot longer than expected, but we love talking about Doctor Who, so it's fine. As you might have noticed, we are missing quite a lot of classic Doctor Who stories, so do let us know in the comments below what stories you think we should pick up. Yep, which ones are next? Let us know and you may see them in a future DVD collection. If you're new, feel free to click the red button down below to join the adventure. I've been Christopher. And I've been Lewis. And you've been... Brilliant! you to know so are you sitting comfortably our tribute to the show is if we had to choose another we just want to know <laughs>